Hi everybody, welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to our second annual preview of indie games to watch out for during this coming year. In this edition, with a few on-screen caveats, we have 40 titles we think should be on your radar across all the gaming platforms. Be sure to let us know which ones you're most looking forward to playing in the comments section below. Links for all the games featured can be found in the description and if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all things indie gaming. In alphabetical order, we begin with A Way Out, an action-adventure game about two prisoners who are trying to escape captivity. The twist here is the only way to play the game is with another player, either online or in couch-based local co-op. Expected early this year, in Aegis Defenders you can expect to take on wild beasts, ruthless soldiers and ancient gods in this 2D platformer that blends Metroidvania-like gameplay with combat inspired by the likes of Tower Defense. Up now in Apex Racing League we have a top-down, classical-looking arcade game for the PC with local and online options. With engaging physics-led driving dynamics, this one's designed to reinvigorate the top-down racing genre. Published by Annapurna Interactive, Ashen is an action RPG about a wanderer looking to find a place called home. At its core, it's a game about relationships within an open world. Multiplayer elements are said to include interactions with other players and NPCs, where in some instances co-op play will be required. The developers have stated they have been influenced by the emergent storytelling found within the game DayZ. Ashen is expected on the Xbox and PC. Based on the exploration of a mountain with over 600 levels across six different chapters, Celeste is a character-driven story with beautiful graphics set in the present-day Pacific Midwest. Chuchal is a comedy adventure game from Amanita Design. You join the hairy Chuchal and his rival Kakel as they face numerous puzzles and challenges in their quest to achieve a precious cherry. Expect wild music, situational humour and dozens of whimsical animations. We're expecting this one to land in the first quarter. Six years after its predecessor, in Darksiders 3, you take on the role of Fury in this third-person, ultra-violent platform hack and slash. Fury uses magic and a bladed whip whilst making her way through colourful, puzzle-filled dungeons. Steeped within an Americana gothic art style, Dead Static Drive is being developed by Mike Blackney. It's an upcoming cosmic horror survival game about a road trip through the end of the world. In one of the oddest looking games of next year, Donut County will see you play as a raccoon called BK. You play as a new hire at a startup that uses remote controlled holes to steal people's property. The more things you collect, the wider the hole becomes and the bigger objects you can suck up. While rather silly, we're looking forward to seeing how the art, gameplay and characters all gel together. At number 10, we find an arcade platformer coming to PC and mobiles later this year. You play as one of the Doodlers, a peaceful inhabitant of Doodland, a place that's been attacked by a merciless monster. It's an entertaining looking auto runner where you can run, jump, swim and even set fire to your pop tarts as you go about the delightfully looking Doodle world. Headed to the EA original program and first shown at last year's E3, Fee features a fox-like creature within a mythical forest environment. While not much is known about Fee, it seems likely to be an adventure platform experience as seen within the likes of Journey and Shadow of the Colossus. Either way, with these visuals, Fee is likely to feature in many must-have lists for the forthcoming year. In a game featuring motion capture imagery from professional dancers, Felix the Reaper is a romantic comedy about the life of death within a 3D shadow manipulation puzzle game full of dance, dying, dangerous love, all spread over 20 plus levels with a 4 to 6 hour playtime. Featuring a world of lost and ignored items, Forgotten Anne is a 2D side-scrolling puzzle platformer with a curious storyline, stunning looking visual presentation and an interesting mechanic by way of an energy source known as Anima which the protagonist can use to aid their progress, all of which makes this debut title from Throughline Games a rather interesting and unique looking offering. 
with very little known about Goose Game, other than you're a rather temperamental goose that seems intent to cause a nuisance to a farmer by way of stealing his radio, bothering him whilst he has his lunch, and generally getting in the way. This is one of our top five games for next year, and we can't wait to see more of it. If that waddling action is anything to go by, this could be an utter delight. The first of the big name sequels for our 2008 showcase, Guacamole 2, takes place seven years after the first story, when the lead character is asked by his friend and trainer to help save Mexico from a new evil menace. The game will feature a new grappling mechanic, four player local co op with all new levels, enemies, bosses, together with beefed up visuals and audio. This one is expected on the PlayStation 4, although there have been hints that it may come to other platforms. Something genuinely unique here with Harold Halibut, it uses stop motion animation to create graphics entirely from using real world objects. This point and click adventure game is based on a spaceship that's crashed on a water planet. We expect Harold Halibut to be available for the PC and perhaps the current generation of consoles. Having slipped from last year, in Knights and Bikes we have a hand-painted action game offering a single and couch or online multiplayer that's inspired by coming-of-age movies such as The Goonies and classic games such as The Secret of Mana. Perhaps best known for his work on Edith Finch, Evan Rogers' new solo project Legendary Gary is a hand-painted action RPG about a man playing an RPG. During the day, you'll assume the role as Gary's subconscious as he goes about his day-to-day -day life, and during the evening you play as Gary as he plays the aforementioned RPG. Think a dose of adventuring mixed with a visual novel. Coming in March, Lightfall from Bishop Games, a successfully funded Kickstarter project from 2015, sees you explore the world of Numbra and offers a 2D platformer in the land of Eternal Night. Inspired by such things as Limbo and Bastion, Lightfall looks to offer a new concept of platforming merged with a silhouette art style and a trail of intrigue. Landing towards the middle of the year, Lonely Mountains Downhill is a third-person mountain biking game featuring ragdoll-style physics, combining the elements of a relaxing ride in the woods together with some extreme downhill action. In this one, you're free to choose whatever route you fancy to reach the finish line. Strongly influenced by Heo Miyazaki, Lona is about a girl who paints to escape her troubles. It's a strikingly beautiful looking game with its concept art brought to the fore and will blend point and click adventuring with aspects of colouring in to explore the themes of fear and chaos. With no truce for the Furies, we have a story-driven isometric police procedural RPG that stars a disgraced detective within an urban fantasy setting and features an inventory with your thoughts, skills you're able to have conversation with, and a soundtrack that comes from British sea power. Noita, which means witch in Finnish, is the debut game from Nola Games, who describe their forthcoming title as being a magical action roguelite set in a world where every pixel is physically simulated. You'll be able to fight, melt, burn, freeze and evaporate your way through procedurally generated levels using spells you've created yourself. One of, if not the most anticipated indie game expected this year, Ooblets is a farming, town life and creature collection game clearly inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing. In it, you'll manage your farm, grow and train your Ooblets, run a shop, battle your Ooblets with other trainers and discover the secrets of the Oob. Being developed by Moon Studios, Ori Will of the Wisps, players will control Ori, a guardian spirit, and sane the light and eyes of the forest tree spirit. This follow-up to Ori and the Blind Forest will unfold on a Metroidvania fashion between platforming and puzzler sections. Having added that A into the middle of Prey for copyright reasons, in No Matter Studios' Prey for the Gods we have a brutalistic looking journey on a desolate island in a never-ending winter where the only chance you have to survive is to destroy the very gods you believe in. Here we have Projection First Light, a title that follows the adventures of Greta, a girl living within a mythical world of shadow puppets as she embarks on a journey of self-discovery within an art style and atmospheric visuals and an ethereal soundtrack. Players will take a voyage through the history of shadow puppets through Indonesia, China, Turkey, Greece and 19th century England. 
clearly inspired by the 90s theme Hospital, in Project Hospital, with its suitable retro graphics and isometric point of view, promises to feature and introduce players to real-world diseases, illnesses and their cures. This is the first game from Prague-based Oxymoron Games, whose team members have worked on the likes of Mafia, Mafia 3 and Quantum Break. While not too much is known about Project Code Shift, from the reveal and gameplay trailers we're assuming it to be a brawler, with a blend of science fiction and ancient martial arts that could be one of the finest of its kind coming out this year. One that may slip into next year, we're rather fascinated by the War of the Worlds and Cloverfield type of vibe given off here by Somerville. This comes from animator Chris Olsen and Dino Patty, the co-founder of Playdead who brought us Limbo and Inside. While very much a mystery, we're expecting a sci-fi action adventure that tells a tale of people in the wake of a global catastrophe. In what no doubt will be one of the biggest indie games of the year, we have Spelunky 2. From the announcement trailer, it seems likely we'll follow the adventures of the child of the original protagonist, and we're likely to see the development of the 2D platformer and permadeath from the original game. The Almost Gone is a mystery isometric point-and-click narrative adventure game that's headed to the PC and smartphones. Here you play as a girl who must come to understand her own death if she's to help others to the afterlife. The Artful Escape of Francis Vendetti is a game about great expectations, famous folk singers, lingering shadows, hallucinations, individuality and wild imaginations. It's a narrative action adventurer where you use the power of music to traverse a painterly world. Amongst the subtle pastel shades of the Garden Between, two friends would explore what appears to be a surreal looking bunch of islands with gigantic sized versions of everyday household objects such as video games, drinks bottles, Jenga blocks and more. Players will be tasked to solve puzzles to aid progression and will be aided by having the ability to manipulate time to achieve their goals. One of the highlight announcements from last year's E3 conference, The Last Night is a pixelated cyberpunk side-scroller that seems to be heavily inspired by Blade Runner. Looks-wise, it's one of the most visually stunning reveals we've seen in a good while, with the neon-drenched artistry and the 16-bit aesthetic adding a sublime level of depth and texture. From the makers of Gods Will Be Watching, The Red Strings Club is an adventure game where a hacker and barman hook up together to try and prevent the brainwashing of society by a global corporation. It's a cyberpunk narrative experience about fate and happiness, and yet the trailer here hints at something dark and grimy. Unavowed is a new supernatural urban fantasy adventure game from Dave Gilbert that's set in the same world as the Blackwell series and yet said to be much darker. Inspired by other games such as point and click and party based adventure titles, this one's set within New York with aspects of the city said to be clearly recognisable. In Unto the End, we have a 2D cinematic adventure with emergent gameplay and skillful sword-based combat. You'll take on the role of a father who sets out on a quest to avenge the death of his family after they were killed by a savage beast. It's said to be a journey driven by unforgiving encounters, meaningful choices and moments of stark beauty. With Vampire, we have a third-person action role-playing game set in 1918 London. Players step into the shoes of a physician called Jonathan Reed, who also happens to be a vampire with a conscience. You decide who to target and kill, and yet you're also free to try and complete the game without hurting a soul. And rounding things off for 2018's showcase, we have Vane. It's an open-world, single-player game in development by a handful of the team behind The Last Guardian. Said to be coming first to the PlayStation 4 and then perhaps to other platforms, the game will focus on discovery and unravelling ancient and hidden mysteries within a strange and unknown land. With Vane ending this year's preview, it's now back over to you. Which games are you most looking forward to getting to play? And if there's anything here you're not so keen on, please feel free to let us know why in the section below. Many thanks for watching, and if you haven't done so already, please hit the like button and why not subscribe to us here at Get Indie Gaming. All the very best for the new year, and please come back soon for more videos.